Alright, so welcome back. Um, today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use the um, true flow grid by the engine TEC. And uh, it's a pretty ideal system. We've got a 20 by 25 Honeywell media filter here. So, what you want to do is grab your insert, it's the right size for the filter. I'm going to go ahead and grab the true flow grid. Slide it in here like such. Cut to the side. Now, this is the um, TT800 manometer. DG800, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and do now. Drill some holes. My static pressure points. I'm gonna check. So we got hole already there, but I'm gonna do supply static as well. I'm gonna do one here. before and after the filter. So we're going to do a return static here, and then one here. Okay, so as you can see we've got one before the filter, one after the, one after the filter, then one after the supply. And now I've got my static pressure probe. The cool thing about this, pretty much is foolproof, the way they set this app out here. We're going to turn on the, the manometer, hold down the power button for five seconds or three seconds, turn on the true flow, grab the app here. True flow grid. So as you can see, we've been, I'm going to do system air flow and static pressure. So select gauge, literally walks you through everything. Selected, selected. It's going to be a furnace. Up flow. Cooling capacity. Okay, so we're going to just say three. 0.5, okay, that's the location, filter slot, yep, cooling climate, humid, this is just saying close any humidifier damper set equipment to cooling mode high, which it's already on, take pressure measurements as locations in the diagram, okay, but first, we're going to do before the filter. Return. So this is going to be the lowest point of the static and return side. So make sure you're facing it toward the airflow. So we've got 0 0.8, 0 0.18. Going to take measurement there. As you can see it's showing up on that as well. Okay. Now it's telling me to go ahead and do it after the closer. Look at that. So these measurements here are basically what you use to get your filter drop. All you have to do is subtract the return plenum side from the furnace side and you'll have the um, static pressure drop of the filter itself. The app actually calculates that but it's a little bit later on once it's finish doing all this processing. I'm going to put it on ah, yep. before the furnace. So we're going to take this here out of here. This is actually cool. And we're going to put it in there. In the 
furnace cluster. Okay, point seven six. All right, tell you we're gonna have a pretty high static pressure. Take measurement. That's crazy. Very high static. Now we're gonna go on the other side of the supply. A lot of pressure drop on this filter, 0.42. This we're going to get on the. And the same with the evaporator coil drop as well. Um, essentially, all you have to do is um, subtract the supply plenum pressure from the uh, furnace, and that'll give you your evaporator coil drop. So now we got all of our measurements. We can take a screen out of that. Let's go ahead and hit continue. Now it's saying leave the pressure probe in the supply plant. I'm, I'm not going to turn the air down there. Ain't nobody got time for that. This was last change, October 2021. October. So we want this to be facing the air coming in. So, as you can see, this is the front side air in. The air is coming from here. You can tell there's just a massive amount of side pressure. Absolutely massive amount. So, put this on. It's reading about 1500 CFM. So take that measurement. And that's how much width the filter in. I think the system's probably going to be oversized for this ductwork. Um, Continue. So our total static, our total external static pressure is <laughs> over an inch, one point one three six. Same. Um, filter drop pressure a little bit high. Evaporator coil pressure drop was very high. Supply kind of kind of off the charts. And our return plan of drop is kind of high. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just a quick video. I wanted to show you how I use the um, digital true flow and um. You know, just how quickly you can get airflow. This is really revolutionary. Um, I know it can be a little bit more affordable. If it gets a better price point or something comparable to a decent price point, this thing will change the game. Uh, a lot of techs, you know, um, airflow is really where it's at. Uh, if we can get our airflow right, we would be able to get a lot of issues resolved. So. All right, so what I went and did is actually found something really cool. I was actually able to verify this airflow using the uh, data plate using the evaporator coils static pressure drop. So as you can see on this data plate, it's a 007, which means it can do between uh, three and five ton capacity. So on the data plate, um, we've got, um, as you can see here, look at the uh, pressure drop characteristics for cooling uh, and heat pump coils with a, a wet coil. So that means the system has to be run for a, probably at least uh, 15 to 20 minutes, which this system was running for at least 15, yeah, probably 15 minutes or so. So if you look at this data plate, go here at the um, 007, and as I go across to 0.3, we had 0.34 was our static pressure. And if you look here, we're, we're literally right at uh, 1500 CFM. 
um, point three is showing fourteen forty five, and point three five is showing uh, fifteen eighty. So the um, the coil pressure drop is actually pretty accurate for um, measuring airflow as well. I know a lot of guys uh, don't really like it that much. Honestly, I've never used it. I usually use total external static pressure um, to assume airflow, but this seems to be pretty accurate based off the manufacturer's data. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool, matter of fact. So yeah, this is just a, a quick little video. Um, I'm gonna probably try to start using this on all my maintenance calls. Anytime you come across a situation like this, you probably wanna just start. I usually start by just checking all the registers, make sure the customer didn't close off any close off any of the uh, dampers on the registers themselves. Yeah, if that's not the case, then more than likely there's going to be just an issue with undersized ductwork. But yeah, other than that, it's, it's actually pretty interesting. So far, I really do enjoy this um, uh, digital true flow grid. It's actually pretty cool, pretty accurate, uh, very repeatable. And um, as you can see, it's super fast as well for properly measuring airflow. So um, if you like what you see, just uh, if you don't mind, give us a thumbs up and a like, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.